This is the Sacred Obsession rigging table. I am Captain Jim Doyle and I'm going to show you, uh, in my opinion, what the best way is to rig ribbon fish for trolling on downriggers and on flat lines uh, in these kingfish tournaments. We're uh, pretty much on the back side of the Northeast Florida kingfish tournament schedule and uh, I've had a couple of friends ask me what my opinion was on, uh, on how to rig for them. So, uh, I, I've got a, a something that we've put together. I say we, uh, the, the guys that I fish with, the buddies of mine on our team. And I think the difference more than anything else is when we, uh, when we grab a jig or a single hook, what we do is rather than rigging to the top or the eye of the jig or the hook, we'll put a swivel over. And there's three or four different sizes, swivels that you can use. We want to make sure that it snaps over the barb so that it doesn't just really slide off the end of the hook. My theory behind this is is that when you rig a ribbon fish, if you rig it like this, eventually the pull is going to come off the dorsal fin. And what happens is, uh, that I've seen, is you put it behind the boat and you see it start to swim and then all of a sudden it does a big loop. And just like rigging a ballyhoo or a mullet, if you don't have the weight of the pull on the head of the ribbon fish, it's going to spin. Uh, with a ballyhoo or a mullet, if the weight of the pull is where the hook comes out of the middle of the fish, you'll notice all it does is spin. Cut a line and get the weight off the hook and put it on the head and all of a sudden it starts to swim real good. Um, we rig these jigs, the naked shovels, the uh, bucktails, and then the CNH, the king dusters, all with swivels. And I'll give an example. This is my faux ribbon fish. I didn't have a real ribbon fish in the freezer, so I put one together out of uh, reflective tape. Uh, but what we try to do is the first thing is, is when we run it, we run it through the bottom of the ribbon fish, out through the very top, and we try to put it just in front of his eyes, dead center. I mean center punch it. The next thing that I think really adds to our success is we leave slack where we put the first hook. You put enough slack here and it's almost a guarantee that the weight of the pull is going to be on the nose of the fish. After that, what we try to do is put a little more slack to the second hook. And then the same thing on the third hook. What this does is it gives the ribbon fish the opportunity to go back and forth. If you pull them tight, it's going to stay like that and then it's going to spin as the hooks wear into the ribbon fish. Now we use Mylar dusters, like I said, these jigs are, uh, are very successful and then we pull these dusters. Now it's our opinion that the heavier jigs work really well on the downriggers. Now they'll work anywhere. All of these work with ribbon fish and uh, to a lesser extent uh, we do the same thing with Spanish mackerel. We'll just cut this third hook off. Same thing with the Spanish mackerel. Um, but the ribbon fish, in my opinion, is probably one of the best dead baits that you control for kingfish. It's gotten to a point, uh, I don't fish that many tournaments anymore, but uh, rather than wait in line and pay top dollar for goggle eyes or blue runners um, or hope that the pogey schools show up off the beach right when we need to get live bait before legal fishing time, um, we've just kind of decided that it's better for us to get 36 to 48 really good hand caught ribbon fish and uh, we'll fish them. Now the strategy that we use on a bigger boat, um, if you've got two downriggers, what we try to do is stagger and what we'll do is we'll do a long and deep and we'll do a short and shallow. And if the water is say 60 feet deep, the first one we do, we'll put down 50 feet. So with the blowback, which is the the, uh, the slack and the wire that, that you troll, it kind of comes down and hits the ball. Uh, the blowback puts us about between 40 and 45 feet down. Then we'll drop another one down, say 25 feet. The blowback there puts it at right at 18 to 20 feet. And then you just basically, through the course of the fishing day, you just basically adjust from top to bottom. Um, you know, you can fish them as shallow. We've put them down 10 feet before and caught fish. So. Um, what you want to do is just make sure every 30 minutes or so you're getting all the water columns because you just never really know where they're going to be hanging out. Now, 
as far as these big giant kingfish, hot July, middle of the day, um, close to a full moon or a new moon, they're going to be sulking right on the bottom. So what you want to do, uh, this is just kind of something I've learned over the years, is you want to put it down as far as you can go just, just before the ball is starting to drag on the bottom, your downrigger ball. So if you're 60 feet deep, we drop it down 55 with the blowback that puts us right above where we think these big kingfish are going to be sitting at. Uh, the second thing is on the small boat guys, 16, 17, 18 footers, um, even if you've just got one downrigger, uh, it's my opinion if we're 60 feet deep, uh, put it down 30. Drop it down 30, start off trolling there, 25 feet down is probably where your bait's going to be. And um, through the course of the day, you just move the ball up and down. Every 30 minutes, you drop it 10 feet shallower um, or 10 feet deeper and then bring it up 10 feet shallow. It, uh, it, it doesn't make any difference just as long as you're catching all of the water columns. Now, I think the other thing that has led to our success, and this is, this is something we found out by accident, but we normally slow troll about one to one and a half knots faster than what you normally would if you're trolling pogies or goggle eyes. Um, and the reason we just kind of came across is my buddy has a 25 foot Parker, it's twin 150s, all the way back on the throttles, and then one engine moved forward just to where it's engaged. Um, it pulls about that fast, and he didn't want to fool with sea anchors or buckets or anything like that. So we just decided to start trolling, and it has worked like magic for us. So uh, hopefully this helps you out. Now we troll ribbon fish is the priority. Spanish mackerel is second. On a Spanish mackerel, you won't get one tenth of the bites you get on ribbon fish, but the ones you get on a Spanish are usually going to be big fish, twenties, uh, 20s and up. Uh, the second thing we've experimented with and done really well is uh, horse ballyhoo. Um, those seem to work really well, um, especially trolling offshore. Um, the last thing that we've done pretty good, and, and this is especially off the beach or in and around inlets, is big dead mullet. Uh, my buddy will go and uh, fillet the backbone off and then sew it up with dental floss, and that thing just flops back and forth as you're trolling it. And uh, we've done really well with those, but like I said, the priority is ribbon fish, nothing against gogs or runners. Um, if I can get three dozen of them in the bait well, that's, that's just that much better. Uh, the problem is I just don't want to pay 12 bucks a piece for them. I'd rather get, like I said, three to four dozen, uh, really good quality ribbon fish. Um, but here's a note to you. If you're going to put three dozen ribbon fish on the boat, you better have three dozen leaders rigged up and these things take a lot of time to put together especially if you're going to do them right but uh we've caught big kingfish we've caught big cobia we've caught giant wahoo we've caught tarpon we've caught sharks we've caught barracuda uh and we actually caught a sailfish about five years ago all of them on ribbon fish i don't think there's a fish out there that doesn't like to eat them so uh, once again, my disclaimer, I don't, I don't think I'm all that, but I've fished a lot of kingfish tournaments and I've won some money. Um, and I've done it primarily, I say I, my team, the guys that I fish with, my buddies, we've done it all primarily pulling dead ribbon fish. So again, uh, the weights work best on the bottom. These we run off either off the T-top or the outriggers and we always run a long center. Uh, we'll try to do five rods. Um, two on the downriggers staggered, two off the outriggers of the T-top staggered, and then one a long center. Um, small boat guys, uh, you may not have the room to pull five lines. So if I'm on a 17-foot Key West, I'm going to have one downrigger, and I'm going to put it down 30 feet starting off, on the, and that'll be on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to have my flat line, and I'm going to put it a good ways out, kind of right in the middle, right as the prop wash starts to go away. And then I'm going to run a long center. And when I say long center, I'm going to put it 200 yards back. Um, the theory behind that is a lot of time fish will come up and look at, the, look at the flat line. They'll drop back down. They haven't made up their mind. And then just about the time they decide they're hungry, that long center goes right over the top of them, and they crush it. And a lot of times they'll skyrocket out of the water. Um, so that's my opinion on ribbon fish and how I like to rib for them, uh, excuse me, rig for them. Um, 
hopefully uh, you guys can some can get some information off of this. The ones that aren't don't have a whole lot of confidence. Uh, I do. If it's up to me, and uh, I don't have anything else on the boat but ribbon fish, I've got a lot of confidence. Uh, good fishing, tight lines. Thanks for watching.